Hi, James Com, your half-assed, half-assed, half-assed reporter, and it's a Sunday afternoon, and it's starting to swelter here in New York City. We're gonna run into the Mark Strauss Gallery. And we've had a lot of requests for sculptures, so we're gonna look, take a look at a sculpture show titled Stereo Love Seats Hot Wheels. walk around the first gallery installation. Well, I want to start out looking at this piece by one of my all-time favorite artists, Red Grooms. This is titled The Minister of Transportation, Mixed Media. This is 1974-75, so this is, I think this is about the time he was working on his Ruckus Manhattan project. Well, I've had a lot of people say that I don't pay enough attention to sculpture. Uh, I'll admit it, I like painting, but I think this is a uh, very interesting show, mainly because the whole show is based on the very simple and uh, everyday object of the chair. They even talk about uh, Plato and Wittgenstein talking about chairs. This is by Fokker de Jong, titled Dust, 2004. Styrofoam polyurethane form silicone rubber, 67 by 39 by 39. Well. Seems like there is a lot of work that we've been seeing lately that is incorporating or featuring this, uh, styrofoam. And uh, I've done a little construction work lately, so we've ended up using sheets of the pink styrofoam for insulation. Read a little bit from the press release. Themes of war, greed, and power dominate Fulker de Jong's practice as he constructs characters and theatrical scenes that heavily reference his own interactions with contemporary media and global events. Okay. Also, I've got some of that uh, expanding foam, and I like the uh, the tassels on the loafers. Interesting detail. This is the Orientalist by Huma. Bamba. And I just like this is a very kind of classic example of a seated figure, except that it's 
all kind of constructed out of what was formerly styrofoam chicken wire. It's like fabric, clay, and then it's all been cast in bronze. This piece is 70 by 33 by 41 inches. It says, Huma is a Pakistani-born artist and her work assembles a variety of found materials into abstract and often eerie forms. I actually like the way this uh, leg comes out, transitions down into this. It's like a two by four and then the uh, kind of big chunky foot. And it's nice the way they've maintained the, uh, the chicken wire from the original armature in there. Okay, we're gonna run upstairs and catch the rest of the show. Again, we'll come in, make a quick initial sweep. Well, they've got a uh, soundtrack playing in the background that I believe is a Led Zeppelin live performance that's part of a piece. This piece is titled Desperately Optimistic, and it sounds like the story of my life by Michael Brown, Aluminum and Stainless Steel. Constructed while he was still an undergraduate student at the State University of New York at New Paltz, Michael Brown captures a moment in seeming American, in seeing America through his piece, Desperately Optimistic. Using aluminum and stainless steel, the choice of materials immediately distinguishes the lawn chairs from their regular everyday counterparts. The crushed beer cans seem to imply a sense of activity and use, while the lawn chairs wait for their human occupants. Well, I was uh, kind of put in mind of Katie Nolan and some of her pieces where she kind of transforms this very quotidian objects into some kind of monument to industry. This is by Jean Silverthorne. <laughs> I thought it said Jean Silverthrone. It's gonna, but that would have been a very appropriate name for an artist. This is what it felt like to be human. Well, I was talking before about how the chair is a very normal, everyday object that everyone in their backside knows pretty well. Yeah, I'm thinking of the uh, the Luther Vandross song. A chair is still a chair, even when there's no one sitting there. But a house is not a home. Blah, blah, blah. I remember talking to a friend of mine, Charles Seplowan, who teaches sculpture up at uh, Lehman College, and he said, Every sculptor has got to make at least one chair in their career. And uh, I think the reason for that is that in one way they are the most kind of simple uh, standing and basic structures, but also they have an almost an infinite number of variations you could play with, and also materials. 
thinking uh, Joseph Boys did a great chair piece. It was, I think it was a pile of lard on a chair seat. It's more Led Zeppelin. This is by Woody Diothello. Faceless face jug. You know, I'm looking around and I'm thinking that uh, there are a couple of approaches that they use here. One of them is that the chair is just like this, a pedestal or a plinth upon which they can place something else. Or it's like this piece by Joel Otterson, which titled Stereo Love Seats, parentheses Hot Wheels from 1988, in which I leave the, the chair is open and it almost invites you to uh, take the space to sit down to uh, occupy the, the pedestal. This is copper tubing and fittings, lacquered wood furniture, hand-painted acetate down-filled cushions, steel and rub rubber casters, contact disc player, and speakers. This piece not only is dealing with the idea of sculpture and structure, but also sound and uh, technology. I don't know, does anybody even play with a, use a disc player anymore? I guess you could have had a tape deck. And I've got the little, the little pillows that have got sections of uh, Led Zeppelin posters or album covers, maybe. I think I saw a Jimi Hendrix picture here somewhere. Mark Manders figure with iron ruler, paint aluminum, iron, and various materials. Okay, also, some of the uh, pieces, the chairs are very altered or hand-built. This looks like it's uh, actually made and then cast in aluminum, but it's a very nice uh, copy of a little Imes chair, maybe. An intense emphasis on the contrast Working and reworking of pieces and materials dominates Marx Manders' practice as an artist working in sculpture and drawing and installation, toying with themes of reality and fiction, allows Manders to draw together fragment, fragmented forms and materials whose connections and meanings are often unclear or obscured. Got these lines that come down under the leg, back up. Back down. I'm gonna wrap up looking at this little piece by Sandra Tomboloni, titled Rocking Chair. 2004, this is wood and plastiline. An Italian artist with a background in tailoring and 
costume design from Torna Baroni, tailoring school in Florence, Italy, Sandra Tomboloni uses a device, uses a diverse range of materials and colors to create whimsical scenes of fantasy. Okay, well, actually I was interested that this was made in 2004, and just like sculpty clay or, or plastiline, and so this is about 14 years later, it still looks all right. It's holding up. James Com recording on stereo love seats, Hot Wheels, Mark Strauss Gallery. Over to Canada here at 33 Rome Street. It's about 10 minutes before closing time. I stuck my head in and I said, uh, well, this would be something different. So we're gonna look at an exhibition of electrified Sculptures by Luke Murphy. This is untitled. Well, I have to say, I <laughs> I'm an old oil painter. I like painting, but also I'm interested in uh, whatever is happening out there and people doing some experiments with various things. So I stuck my head in here and I said, there's actually some kind of uh, fun pieces here. So I'm looking at this and seeing that he's got his LED screens and then he's also like stuck in fragments of computer keyboards. I think one of the reasons that I kind of shy away from this kind of work is that uh, I'm already spending way, 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 way too much time looking at screens. But I thought there are some very nice painterly qualities, coloristic qualities about this. This is titled VOF.2 in camel case, 16 and a half by 30. Maybe that's the wrong title. I thought that's got some nice, nice color. We'll get up and zap our eyeballs here. I think the other great thing about <laughs> the exhibition in Canada in general is that, uh, hey, it's air conditioned. We'll walk around and get an initial idea of the layout. I think one of the things I kind of enjoy about Luke's pieces is that well, there's a lot of video art, a lot of work that I've seen on LED screens and little video monitors. And I think one of the things that's kind of interesting about this is that he's he's playing with the, the structures and the mechanics and the, uh, the way that he's putting these apparatuses together, which is not that much different than thinking about uh, say, a stretched canvas or a diptych or something else.
This is titled P10 Tower, Piece of Work, 2016. Well, of course, I'm one of those people that can't look at a, uh, a form like this and not uh, think back about the uh, Twin Towers. I was standing on the roof of my loft 17 years ago with a pair of 7X binoculars and uh, I watched the South Tower go down. So this is actually nice the way this uh, color starts to bleed in and eventually uh, absorbs the form. Okay, this is an interesting piece because uh, yeah, we've got this uh, little rectangle that comes in on the side with uh, little striped video lines and then the larger area, which on the monitor looks like it's kind of rose and uh, turquoise, when I look at it not on the monitor, that area is kind of a bronze looking, but if I jiggle my eyes I start to see the striations. Uh, again, this is kind of interesting the way that he's, he's got these little panels, kind of like the Teresa of a mosaic, and he's bending them and then kind of graphically inserting other vi video that are presenting their own patterns, lines. Yes, I guess a lot of this could be riffing on other famous modern sculpture. So we got um, Don Judd and his boxes and uh, another great minimalist, Jackie Windsor, I think did a whole series of boxes. It's titled Every Pixel Bright 2018. Thirty and a quarter by twenty-five by twenty-five. And I like the way you can see the, uh, the circuitry and the uh, all the connections back to the uh, computer board. The motherboard. Oh, this is funny. This is titled Kindling. So we've got uh, these kind of coloristically hopped up digital images of fire propped up in a corner and I'm getting digitally warm from standing so close to it. I think this is the piece that actually uh, convinced me to come in and uh, do a little video tour of the show. This is titled Log Cabin Quilt. 2018, 62 by 41 by 5. I guess we could stand here and uh watch each one of these sections flip color 
Well, I'm a big fan of quilt art. I've been trying to get up to the Met to see the uh, Souls Grown Deep sh show that uh, presents a bunch of uh, pieces from the Arnett collection and especially his Gibend quilters. And I like the idea of this as a digital version of that kind of work. Okay, they're giving us the eye, telling us it's time to move out. I thought it was a ladder, and she said it was a serpent. Okay. All right, and I like the idea of, uh, so you've got this kind of a twisted form, these layers of these little panels. And then the great thing about the video is that you also get this motion of these forms drifting up and down across your twisting panels. And I like that they're using this uh, computer tower as a place to lean, lean the work. Time to go. So, this is James Com reporting on Luke Murphy, Every Pixel Bright, here at Canada. What's the address? 33 Brome Street, on the Lower East Side. Thank you, and thank you, Kate. <laughs> Bye. You can leave your comments, criticisms, reviews, suggestions, ideas. You can like this and subscribe. But what you've got to do also is to say, thank you, Kate. Thank you. Here, we're not really much more.